we've learned an awful lot about blended learning already within the Learning Development Centre. That's all we ever hear about blended learning. And I really wanted the opportunity to sort of practice what we're preaching here at the LDC. But I really wanted to try using or implementing blended learning using a virtual learning environment that actually offered the tools and activities that um, unfortunately city space um, did not. So I was really looking forward to, um, to using Moodle with our students on the MA in Academic Practice module, specifically the, uh, the baseline module, which is the Learning, Teaching and Assessment module. And so I was really looking to see how I could really enhance that module um, through the use of Moodle. I'd say that this is a difficult question for me to answer because my expectations, I wasn't quite sure what they were um, and they keep changing the more that I'm using Moodle. I'd say to start with, yes, definitely Moodle completely exceeded my expectations. But now that I'm using it a lot more, that I'm finding that there are some limitations, there are some oversights, uh, you use some tools sometimes, you think, oh, it's a shame that it doesn't do this. For example, the blogging tool, um, you can't actually, people can't add comments to each other's blogs, which just seems a bit of an oversight. But that doesn't really matter, because in a way, you can consider the third party blocks that Moodle offers um, and there are loads and what's great about them is they're all open source and free to use. Of course again there's a slight drawback to, to that in that you are taking a bit of a risk when you use third party blocks because they haven't really been tested. So you're kind of putting yourself out there and using something that's not really been that well tested but I guess that depends on how confident you are with using technology. But I'd say overall that Moodle is meeting my expectations. The students generally seem happy. Uh, we haven't had much in the way of, sort of formal feedback from our students. I would say one of the difficulties that we have had is the fact that okay, our students on the MA in Academic Practice are also staff. So in order to use Moodle, they actually have to register as a student. And that's kind of like the first stumbling block that they find. And it, it's a bit of a, it's an unnecessarily tricky process to go through. And that's kind of like their first introduction to using Moodle, is to go off and go and get themselves a student account, then log in. There's all kind of silly problems along the way. So that's kind of been a bit of an issue. And um, also, I'd say anecdotally, we've had some comments from students saying that uh, Moodle hasn't been used consistently across all the modules in our programme. So, for example, our foundation, our baseline module, the learning, teaching and assessment module, is using Moodle really well, but then students might find that other modules aren't using it so well simply because um, we've really invested all of our efforts into changing this module, but we do need to make sure that all of our other modules across the programme are, are consistently um, enhanced in the same way as the first module. I think there are many positive aspects of using Moodle. The first one I would say is it's very simple and easy to use. There's, um, because of that, there's a real satisfaction that you get out of creating something and then actually sitting back and observing it being used by your students. So that's a real positive aspect for me. I like the fact that obviously I can interact with my students outside of teaching days. Um, something I feel actually I wouldn't have been able to do nearly as well using City Space. The other thing that I really like about Moodle is that it does offer so many tools and activities and it's quite fun to go away and try and create something around those. So, um, for example, thinking about the types of discussion um, boards and forums that you could create for your students to use. 
Um, and I also like the way that Moodle allows you to really customise the look and feel of your modules as well according to what your students um, would want from your module too. So. Um, yeah, well actually we've changed the learning teaching assessment module from what it was in July this year to what it is now. Um, a couple of those changes include things like we no longer upload Microsoft Office documents onto the Moodle site because last time so many students had difficulties accessing Word documents for example. So we now have everything in PDF format. It's a universally viewable document, everyone can download them. Uh, the other thing that we do is you know, we're just now uploading all of our content and activities onto Moodle before students log into, the, into Moodle. Um, this is because if students log in and they just see a very empty Moodle site, they're probably not going to engage with Moodle again. Um, so it's good to have some activities ready and waiting for them to engage with. And as I said before, we just, we're just trying to keep the module um, very dynamic um, and we're always trying to make sure that it, it's changing so there's different discussion boards on there all the time, different activities. Also kind of connecting up the things that we do in class. So for example, we might take pictures of brainstorms and group work activities that students have done in class and actually put them onto Moodle. I think that doing that kind of thing, keeping it very dynamic and fresh on the Moodle site gives the students a sense of, well, we actually care about their learning outside of class and we want them to enjoy using the Moodle site as well. Okay, well when you're using Moodle for the first time, I think you should plan what you want to do on paper, first of all. Think about the activities that maybe you would have liked to have done in class but you just don't have time for. Well, now you can you can use Moodle for that. So plan what you what you want to do on paper first of all. And then don't be afraid to try it out. You're not going to break the system. Um, so just try out lots of different things, try out different tools, figure out how they work, pilot it first of all, just start off with one or two modules and then also another good thing would, and I wish I'd done this actually is actually ask your students for their input into the design of the site as well because they'll be the ones that's using it so um, that's what I would recommend that you do and just have a go